Welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. Today, we will continue with part two, math grade six, week two for module assistance for students help desk or MASH. The generalization there has Polya's four steps of solving a mathematical problem. I'm not going to go over all of this because this can already be found in the module of your kids. Now, they have also given you one sample problem there. Again, I'm not going to discuss this because you can already find that in your module. Now, let's take a look at your exercise one. Number one, Cassandra has five eighths of the cake left after her party. If she gave two fifths of the remaining cake to her cousins, what part of the whole cake did she give away? Now, I have some confusion about this problem because I'm not actually sure what the question is asking for. Is it just asking for the two fifths that she has given away to her cousins? Or is it asking for the entire part of the cake that she has given away? And so I will be solving those two parts. You also have a choice of writing the two answers to our problem here. Okay, so again, Cassandra has five eighths of the cake left after her party. So if this is a cake, we are going to divide it into eight equal parts because we have the denominator of eight in our first part of the problem here, okay? Denominator is eight, so that means we have eight equal parts to begin with. Okay, now the first part of the sentence says, Cassandra has five eighths of the cake left after her party. So that means these three other parts here were already given away. Okay, so these three other parts are already gone. She only has one, two, three, four, and five out of the eight parts left. So that's five eighths of the cake left after her party. Then she gave two fifths of the remaining cake to her cousins. Okay, now as you can see here, we have five equal parts. Even just by looking at our illustration, you can see that this is the part that she has given to her cousins, okay? That's two-fifths, okay? That would be two-fifths of the remaining cake, and that was the part that she has given to her cousins. And so to solve this, we are going to get two-fifths of five-eighths, okay? So we are going to take two-fifths of five-eighths. Now, as you have learned in the previous part of in math, simply means multiplication, okay? So we multiply two-fifths by five-eighths. Now, again, we are going to simplify our fractions here by looking across the two fractions, okay, and trying to find out if they have a GCF. The numerator of the first fraction here is two. The denominator of your second fraction is eight. Now, we know that their GCF is two, right? Because um, the factors of two is just two and one. The factors of eight, you have several factors of eight, but of course their GCF, their greatest common factor would just be two. So we divide both of them by two. Two divided by two, of course, that's one. And eight divided by two, that would give you four. Okay. Now you have five and five here, and you know that you can simplify both of them by dividing them by five. Okay. So that would be five divided by five. That will give you one and five divided by five. That's also one. So now we can proceed with our multiplication. We've already simplified our fractions. And so we can already proceed with our multiplication. So you see one over one here. If you have a fraction which has a numerator and denominator as the same number, that would just be equal to one, okay? So it's just actually one multiplied by one fourth. And so the answer here would just be one fourth, okay? So one fourth, that is the part of the cake that Cassandra gave to her cousins, okay? That would be the part of the cake that Cassandra, that Cassandra gave to her cousins because one-fourth is equal to two-fifths of the five-eighths that she has left, okay? Now, looking at our, our cake here, representation of our cake, if we are going to divide our cake into four equal parts, since we have a denominator of four there, okay, we'll divide this into e four equal parts. So this is one part here. This is the second part, okay? This is the third part, and this is the fourth part, okay? Now, remember, she has given two-fifths to her cousins. Now, you can see that two-fifths is actually equal to one-fourth of the entire cake, okay? This is one-fourth of the entire cake. So we know that our answer is correct. That's one of the four parts of the cake there. Okay, now if the question is actually asking for the total amount of cake that she has given away, then we have to add the one fourth here that was given to her cousin 
to the three eights, the three parts out of eight that she has already lost during the party. Because remember, to start with, after the party, she only has five eights left. So that means the three eights, the three parts out of the eight parts of the cake were already gone. So we are going to add that. Okay, that means we add three eights to one fourth. Now, as you can see, your fractions are dissimilar fractions. That means they don't have the same denominator. So what we can do is we need to convert them into similar fractions or, or fractions having the same denominator. To do that, we need to get their LCD, least common denominator, or their LCM, which is the least common multiple. Now, what are some multiples of eight? Multiples of eight would be eight, of course, 16. Okay, 24, 32, etc. Okay, now for 4, you have 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. Now remember, we're looking for the least common multiple, which is the lowest number. And as you can see, some of the common multiples here are 16 and 8, but the least, of course, is 8. So we use 8 as our denominator, okay? So that would be our similar fractions now. Now, how did we get the similar fractions here? Remember that eight is the LCD or the LCM, so we use that as the denominators of our similar fractions. Now, what we do is we divide that LCM by the original denominator, and we multiply the quotient by the numerator, okay? So we have eight divided by eight, that would just give us one, and we multiply that by the numerator of three. Okay, so again, eight divided by eight, that's one multiplied by three. That's why we have three here in our fraction. Now, another thing for one fourth, okay, we proceed to one fourth, we have eight divided by four, so that is going to give us two multiplied by one, we know is two, okay? So that's why you have two as your numerator here in one of your similar fractions. Now, since our fractions have the same denominators or are now similar, we can already proceed to addition, okay? So three plus two, that would just give us five. And of course, we just copy the denominator that is common to both of them or their LCD. Okay, so that means our answer would be five eighths. That's the total amount of cake that she has given away. Okay, that was the three eighths. And we have also added the one fourth that she has given to her cousins at the end of the party. Okay, so five eighths, that's the total part of the cake that was given away. We go to question number two. For each day of the week, Roy spends two and five, six hours helping in the family store. How many hours does he work in a week? Okay, now we know that there are seven days in a week, and for every day or daily, he works two and five, six hours. Okay, he works two and five, six hours every day, and we know that there are seven days a week. So, what we can do here is we simply multiply two and five, six hours by seven. Okay, so two and five, six hours by seven. Now we know that whenever you have a whole number, its denominator would just be one. Okay, so that is just equal to two and five, six hours multiplied by seven over one. Okay, now as you can see, we have a mixed number here. And so we convert this into our improper fraction, the same process as the ones that we had in part one of our MASH. Okay, so we multiply the denominator and the whole number. So that's two times six, giving us 12. Then we add 12 to our numerator of five. Okay, so 12 plus five, that would give us 17 over six hours. Okay, that's 17 over six. Okay, so again, 17 was taken from this. That's two times six equals 12. Then we add that to our numerator of five. So that's 17, and we simply copy the denominator here. Then we multiply that by the seven days that we have in a week, okay? Now, looking at our numerators and denominators for both fractions, we see that we cannot simplify our fractions right now. They don't have any common factor except the number one. Okay, so we proceed with our multiplication. 17 times seven, that would give you one and 19. Then of course, six times one, that will give you six. And so your answer would be one and 19 over six 
hour. Now, as you can see, 119 over 6, that's an improper fraction. And so we need to simplify this by converting it into a mixed number. How do you do that? Simply divide 119, the numerator, by its denominator of 6. Okay, so 119 divided by 6. Okay, so you take 11 first. 11 divided by 6, that's just 1. Okay, 1 times 6 is just 6. And of course, you subtract 6 from 11 there. That would give you 5. And you bring down 9. Okay, so you have 59 divided by 6. Now, we know that that would be 9 because 9 times 6 is 54. Now, as you can see, there is a remainder of 5. So in our final answer here, in our mixed number, the whole number here becomes the whole number, of course, of your mixed, mixed number. Your remainder becomes the numerator. Your divisor becomes the denominator. And so the final answer would be 19 and 5 sixths hours. Okay, so that's your final answer. Okay, now we go to number three. A room is nine and a half meters long and seven and two thirds meters wide. What is the area of the room? Now, the formula for area is just length times width. So that means we are just going to multiply nine and a half meters by seven and two thirds meters. Now, both of these are mixed numbers. So we are going to convert them first into your improper fractions. Okay, so again, we multiply nine and two here, multiply nine by two. That gives you 18 plus 1. Okay, That, of course, would give you 19 over 2. Now, here, you multiply 7 by 3. That's 21. You add that to 2. So that would give you 23 over 3. So that's area equals 19 over 2 meters or meter times 23 over 3 meter. Okay. Now, as you can see, looking across our fractions, we cannot simplify our fractions here, okay? There, we cannot find any common factor except one between the numerators and denominators of our two fractions. So we proceed with our multiplication. 19 times 23, that is going to give you 437. Then, of course, 2 times 3, that would give you 6. As you can see, your unit is meters squared or squared meters since you have multiplied meters and meters. Okay, now you can see that our answer here is an improper fraction. So we have to convert it into a mixed number by dividing our numerator by the denominator. Okay, so all right, so that's 437 divided by 6. Okay, so uh, we divide 4 by 6, cannot be, so we take 43. 43 divided by 6, of course, is 7. 7 times 6 is 42. And so we subtract 42 from 43. That would be equal to 1. Then bring down 7. That's 17 divided by 6. 17 divided by 6 would just be 2. And 2 times 6 is 12. So there is a remainder of 5. Okay, so again, in our final answer, the whole number here becomes the whole number in your mixed number. Your remainder becomes the numerator and your divisor becomes your denominator. And so the final answer would be 72 and 5, 6 squared meters. Okay, so that's the final answer. All right. Now we proceed to the last item that we have here. Mang Ramon can plow his four-fifths hectare farm in an hour. If he plows three-fifths hour, what part of the farm does he plow? Okay, now in this case here, we can just use ratio and proportion. Okay, so we have four-fifths hectare, okay, four-fifths hectare of an hour, and he can plow that in one hour. Now we are looking for the hectare of land that he can plow in three-fifths hour. Okay, so again, your hectares here are written as your numerators and your hours are written as your denominators, okay? Now, what we do is we cross-multiply this, of course, okay? So that means we multiply four-fifths hectares by three-fifths hours and we multiply X hectare, our unknown, by one hour, okay? So that would be four-fifths hectares 
that will be four fifths hectare multiplied by three fifths hour equals x hectare multiplied by one hour. Okay. Now looking at our fraction, we cannot see any, any common factor except one. And so we proceed with our multiplication. Four times three, that would give you 12. Then of course, five times five, that would give you 25. Okay. So you have 12 over 25 hectare hour. Okay. So we simply have the units hectare hour because we multiplied hectare and hour here okay so hectare hour then here on this side of your equation you just have x hectare hour why x hectare hour because you're simply multiplying one times x okay so that's one times x any number or any variable multiplied by one the answer would just be the same variable or the same number okay so we have x hectare hour here now we are looking for the unknown hectare of land and so we need to isolate this part here okay? we need to cancel our hour here and to do that since they are multiplied we need to do the inverse operation of division okay so we divide both sides by hour okay divide both sides by hour all right, now doing that, you can cancel the hour, cancel the hour. Now, as you can see, you are left with just 12 over 25 hectare equals the X hectare of land. Okay, so that means that is already our answer. It's be 12 over 25 hectare. Okay, so that's the final answer for question number four. This has been Coach Mech of Gurung Pinoy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow all our social media accounts. And I say maliit manabutil na mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan.